Okay. So Mr. Henry just came in. Um, so um, basically what we discussed is, is the class yesterday that we had a lot of persons weren't aware and so some persons missed the class. And we'll be doing that class on Monday. Monday coming. Alright, so um we're going to be starting this session. Okay, and basically we'll be looking at preparing uh financial statements which we would would be include um generating income and expenditure and the statement of financial position i know that the ministry of education they are becoming more advanced and so their requirements are a little different than in the past i mean some financial um, controllers who are more accounting inclined they tend to want accrual basis of accounting and they want statement of financial position rather than just a income and an expenditure statement so we are going to be looking at the income and expenditure statement is pretty straightforward that would have been uh, generated based on the entries that you have in, um, put in the system so far but we want to generate the statement of financial position so we are going to look at We're going to review uh, the bank reconciliation. Look at bank. We, we touched on bank reconciliation briefly the last session. Uh, we are going to be looking at preparing your cash book statement from the system. We're going to be looking at creating um, additional balance sheet accounts um, that would help you to enter. Um, statutory and also non-statutory um, transactions so your non-statutory would be like your deductions from salaries and so on we'll also be looking at how to use like a wages payables account on your balance sheet or on your statement of financial position And we will be looking at making ad adjusting entries for payroll. So after we create these additional accounts, we are going to be make, looking at making adjusting entries for payroll. And also we are going to be looking at doing some accruals as it relates to payroll and compensation. Another thing we are going to look at is the fixed asset register which i know that the ministry of education require our school to have a fixed asset register or an inventory of all the all the assets that that um are listing of all the assets that the school would have and the location of, of such asset okay all right so we're going to be looking at as i said the fixed asset register and we're going to look at um doing some notes because once you prepare the statements you need to have notes so persons can follow okay so we're going to get started so um first thing we're going to be looking at is a review of the bank reconciliation and we are just gonna quickly do a, a dummy reconciliation because before you before you prepare your financial statements it's very important that you your account is reconciled because without your account being reconciled you can't even get up an accurate cash book 
So at the end of whatever period, say for instance, you are doing a quarterly, uh, quarterly report or a monthly report, the first thing you need to do is to ensure one, you'd have to post all your, your, your entries and then you'd need to reconcile your account. So we are going to look at, we've been posting a lot of things to the fees account. So I'm going to be looking at the fees account. And I, I think we were, we briefly touched recon, um, bank reconciliation yesterday. But we want to actually force a reconciliation for this session so we can get a reconciliation report. So this is the bank recon inter interface. So once you have posted all your your entries and you go to reconciliation and you have entered for instance your bank charges that enter into your bank charges here and the date at which you are reconciling. So for instance if you are reconciling your accounts at the end of say September. then you can enter your bank charges at the end of September as well. If there are interest earned, you can enter it as well. Bank charges will go to the relevant um, expense account and you would select continue. If you are reconciling for the first time, you will not see a beginning balance. What you would need to do is to check the journal that you did so you would basically check the journal that you did and once you check the journal that you did it is the same thing as entering an opening balance in the QuickBooks interface we're gonna select continue and we're gonna check the journal which is this two million dollars here But we want our account to be reconciled just for the purposes of the demonstration. So we're going to enter all our unpresented checks that we posted. So we had posted unpresented checks as at the 31st of August. We're going to enter those. And remember that you are reconciled as soon as the difference down here is zero and your cleared balance is your cash book balance your ending balance is your bank balance so your whenever your ending balance is equal to your cleared balance the difference will be zero and um you will be basically reconciled we need some some payments to reconcile so the more payments we check the lower the, the difference will be. So we are out by 184,000. We are out by, by 84,000 um, 84, now. We are out by 72,395. We are out by 47,000. Right, let's say this we did not post a check for $47,000 and this is the check that we need to reconcile the account we can go ahead and post that check so we can get the account reconciled so you go to write checks and select the fees account And we are going to put the amount in. The amount on that check that is outstanding. Is forty seven three nine five. We are going to enter 
I'll check for 47395. Class is the fees account. We're going to save and close. And once we tick that check, you are balanced at 1.5 million. Alright, so we are going to click on reconcile now. All right, so the account has been reconciled. So now we are going to display we are going to display the reconciliation report. And our reconciliation report would 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 basically have a so this is the reconciliation summary. So it will have your beginning balance. The next recon that you do, it will have the beginning balance up here. But because we enter the beginning balance as a deposit, it comes down this, side, this section of the report. So your cleared balance, as I said earlier, is actually your, your bank balance. And your register balance is your cash book balance. Your true cash book balance. Because what this means is that you may have deposits in transit totaling 5.5 million. And you have unpresented checks totaling $456,000. So to get a detail, to get a detail of, of, of this summary, would basically need to click on window or let's say uh, normally it brings up both of them here so we'd have to go to reports and go to to banking and go to previous reconciliation and what you will do is here is to select the account and then you're going to select detail all right and we select display so this is the reconciliation detail so here we are seeing the the details of the five hundred thousand dollars which are the checks and payments here and we are seeing the the opening balance there with all the details and we are seeing the, the outstanding payments of 456,000 um, but this is this is this is really uh, for demonstration purposes because for instance if this NCB check was for a check leave then you would have naturally ticked that because that was something that was directly debited from your account alright so it also would show all the deposits that are outstanding so we have deposits and credits these are your deposits um, that needs to go to the bank and this Ministry of Education would have gone to the bank because it would have been a direct deposit but I mean it is a for demonstration purposes I just selected some random um, checks and some random um, payments so that is this is basically where your cash book would be right now 6.5 million and your bank would be at 1.5 million
So there are some deposits there that are in transit. Right, we need to review our recon once you are going to be generating your, your, your financial statement. So now we are going to look at the cash book. So once you have created your recon, once you have done your recon, you have reviewed it, you have checked it, because normally it's a check and balance thing where one person prepares, another person checks and, and signs off on it. Once that is done, then you can look at generating your cash book because it would mean that the fact that the bank account is balanced it would mean that most things or most items would have been entered so to generate the cash book from the system you won't see the word cash book but to get the best the closest thing to a cash book in quickbooks is to to actually print your register so you go to check register here and you choose the register that you want to print and you select the NCB fees account and select OK and basically this is what you would print so here we are seeing the cash book balance here of 6569 to 500 as you can see it on a reconciliation so you're going to click print and you're going to select the period so we are going to select the dates and we're doing it for a month I'm going to select OK and what you can do if you want to save it you can save it as a PDF But this is what the cash book would look like. So you would have the dates. It's basically a running balance. Alright, so you would have you'd basically have a a date column. The first column would be the date column, the second column would be the reference column. Just as you see it there, it's just that it is more compact and it is in black and white. You can actually print it. So the deposits are on the right and the payments are on the left. And as I said, it is a running balance. So you would basically print this off as your cash book. and it it can be if you are using the traditional cash book i know that some schools the ministry still insist on the the, the traditional cash book you can print it off and, and 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 staple it or glue it into that book because it basically does the same thing Alright, so we are going to be creating some additional balance sheet accounts to take care of our statutory and non-statutory um, deductions. So um, to do so, we are going to go back to the chart of accounts and we are going to right click on a blank area and we are going to click new. And the account that we are going to create now is an other type. It's not an income and it's not an expense. It's an other type. And what we are going to be creating now is the wages payables account and the non-statutory deductions account. And statutory and non-statutory. So let's start off by creating the non-statutory deduction account. So we're going to set them up as 
and other current liability. Because I want them to be different. I don't want to put them in their accounts payables. I want to chop them separate from the accounts payables. So the accounts payables would basically be your bills, but these I want to set these up as liabilities because once the school deducts the money from a person's salary, then it's they are liable to pay those monies over to the the different institutions. So we're going to create an account called non-statutory deductions payable. And it's another current liability account. And right, when you do your, when you do your no, when you whenever you do your payroll. Alright, whenever you do your payroll and um, deductions, you would basically put the part to be that was um, deducted from the salary for for um, like salary deductions, loans, and so on to this account. Right. And once you do that, it will ensure that all deductions are, it's a balance, it's a checks and balance kind of thing because it's a, it should be a clearing account. So as soon as you have written all your salary checks, this account should be back at zero. So once you do your salary checks and you have drawn the checks for the deductions or you have done the payments for the deductions, this account would basically be zero. No, even if you don't use QuickBooks for your payroll, remember what you'll be entering is the summaries. So you are going to get the payroll summary from your payroll software. Uh, I mean, some persons use Smart, use Smart Pay, some use um, Oasis, some use TurboPay. Whichever one of these software, it it, the, it can actually give you a, a payroll summary. So it's the summary figures that you'll be entering. So it's a lump sum figure that you'll be entering. Alright, so we're going to select save and new because we want to create um, the statutory deductions as well. So I know schools would pay NIS or would deduct NIS. Well, all the taxes, as a matter of fact, it's just that the schools would, 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 would contribute to NIS and, and NHT. But we need to set up all the taxes as a payable because the schools will also be deducting income tax for, for persons who are over the threshold. So you would set up all of those accounts individually so you can know what taxes are. You can keep a track of your taxes on your balance sheet. Because some boards may, re may require a report on their statutory deductions for board meetings. And if you set up your QuickBooks properly, you can easily go to the meeting and say, well, these are the statutories that we have outstanding. Because, I mean, some schools are, they get their funding from the Ministry of Education, but the funds that they get maybe can just cover uh, the checks and the deductions. Maybe it's they, are, they don't have enough funds to cover the statutory deductions and so the statutory deductions are not paid on a timely manner and because it's a government institution um, some persons don't see it as very urgent because they are going to say well it's, it's still the government the government owes us money or the government should give us money and we owe them um, statutory payments so you, you would need a, an account to track this Yes, miss. No, 
if the ministry is doing that but but look at it now remember you know that remember you'll have people who you pay like the little man who would work at the talk shop or, or and the canteen and so you'll still have persons that you pay right that you need to still pay over their statutories right so you still need to set that up so you have nis payable save and new but i'm going to create a, a broad sub called statutory deductions payable and i'm going to break them out so i'm going to create a broad heading i should say called statutory deductions payable and you can shorten it and that's a broad account that NIS payable would fall under we're going to create another one called NHT payable and this would fall under the same sub going to create another one called um, Ed Tax Payable and this would fall under same statutory reductions payable and income tax payable I don't think the schools um, deduct art so that it, that that's excluded okay so we are going to save and close and we just need to look to see that these accounts are set up properly oh you would have to create an account called pension payable but it pensions are not necessarily statutory um, deductions but you 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 can create a pension payable account which would be a separate other current liability account so you can create a pensions account it's not technically a statutory deduction but you can put it under there I don't think it would pose a problem if you put it under there all right so let's Let's say pensions. Our pension scheme. And we're gonna sub it. That's it. Can you can or if you want to just not sub it and just make it stay there? It still works. Alright, so these are your balance sheet accounts as it relates to your statutory and your non-statutory which we created here i've seen cases where some schools go to the, the detail of subbing accounts for each for each um institution under the statutory deduct non-statutory deductions period but i mean you don't need to go that detail it's a very good um way to ensure that each institutions um have gotten their payment but i mean I, 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 if you are using summary figures you would still get the same result so the only thing you need to have is non-statutory deductions payable all right so we're now going to create an account for wages payable and the wages payable accounts are basically wages that you would owe persons so for instance you um persons are supposed to get an increase or retractive payment and you have worked out that amount then you can put it on your balance sheet as as owing because you you a teacher can be working for teacher paid schools at 
a, a teacher can be working for for some time and I mean either their documents were not processed by the ministry on time or they they are due some kind of retroactive payment as a result of qualification and so on and and you don't have the funding what you what what we need to have an account to track the total amounts that are due to those persons and that's where the wages payables account would come in so it's the same other current liability account and we set it up as wages payables our wages wages payable I should say Okay, so we are going to be doing some journal entries now, some adjust, adjusting um, journal entries. So after you have completed your payroll and you have gotten your payroll summary from your accounting package, you will now need to do your entries for the, for the payroll. But however, uh, we did not create a an account for the to track the contributions that the school would have made so i'm wondering if it is necessary to have a sub account under the payroll account or the compensation account um, as per the ministry budget to track the the contribution from the school yes go ahead miss no the the wage payable is not sub, it is a broad account. Because what you can actually do, you can you can break it out. So it's a broad account. So if you want to add the different categories of your staff, you can you can add it. It's a broad it's a parent account. So if you need to maybe uh, um have academic, you can you can break it out as well. So you can say academic. So you can know what is due to academic versus um, administrative. Right, so it, it is a parent account. And this is this is your balance sheet, so we're not looking at your in, income and expenditure. This is your balance sheet and a lot of persons um, uh, ignore the balance sheet section of QuickBooks. So we are going to be doing the journal. So to do a journal in QuickBooks, you are going to go to Company, and you are going to go to Make General Journal Entries. QuickBooks will auto populate the journal entry number, and we are doing this entry as at the end of the month. So what you are going to be doing is you are going to be charging your your salaries account which would be compensation with the, with the lump sum amount. So you are going to pick up that um, um, the compensation account um, from your chart of accounts as per the MOE um, sample budget and you are going to be entering the, the total amount for the salary. So let's say, and these figures are rough figures, let's say your salary is $2 million. That's your gross salary. What you are going to be doing is to enter your deductions so let's say income tax
And as I said, these are demonstration purposes. I know that income tax, you need to apply a threshold and all of those things. But this is for gen uh, just to show you how the journal would work. So you pick up whatever is on your, your payroll summary for income tax. Then you would pick up your NIS. <laughs> Everything should total to two million dollars. Right? I know what I just said. Um, we're just doing it for demonstration purposes. So the rates, the rates might be different. Um. But let's use it three percent since you provide the correct rate. All right, and the NHT rate is two point two percent still. Okay. Okay. So once you have entered. And that, that should be, I think we're missing one income tax NIS NHT. We're missing head tax. And head tax is what? 2.75? 2.25. Okay. Alright, so basically what should go to your oh um we are missing one account right let's say we're gonna enter let's say we have deductions totaling three hundred and fifty thousand dollars we are gonna enter the deduction amount to the non statutory deductions Right, and we need to have an account called net salary payable. But you can use the wages payables account to do it. So we don't necessarily need to create one for that because that account is supposed to be cleared um, quickly. So let's say wages payable. This would basically be the net. So it means that if you are paying 10, 10 employees at $100,000 each net, it should be posted against this account. So it means that the entry would go against this $1 million. Right? So when you are writing your checks, you would basically that entry would credit your bank account and debit this wages payables account to eliminate it to zero all of those checks all right so we're going to save and close and of course we're going to put your narration entry to record payroll and you can Oh, and you need to put the period. Period is very important. You can copy and paste. Uh, in terms of the contributions for that the, that the, that for that the school would make the, the matching contributions, you would basically do the entries below right i mean i'm not uh, we're not gonna have the time to go into it but basically you would put it to the compensation so let's say um nht 
Now, which of them are the matching contribution? NIS. Let's say NIS $60,000. So we need to enter the matching $60,000 to compensation and the other side of the entry is going to go to NIS payable. So it means that the total NIS payable on your balance sheet would now be $120,000. So we're going to select save and close. And let's copy the narration for these. Oh, and we need to enter a class to be subvention. So subvention account is the class for all of these. So it's important that you enter the class on a line by line basis because anything that you don't put a class beside will appear in the unclassified section of your reports. So we select save and close and we go to our reports. We're going to go to our balance sheet standard. So company and financial and we go to balance sheet standard. What you will see here is and in the liability section, in the liability, frozen. All right, let me. All right, as at the, ensure it is as at the correct date. So as at the 30th of September, what we'll have under liability, we'll have. We'll have a wages payable of one million dollars, and we'll have statutory deductions payable payable of seven hundred and ten thousand dollars. Right, so we are seeing the wages payable, but this the wages payable would not take you up until the end of the month. So once you run your payroll, say for instance, you run your payroll the eighteen, and you write the checks on the twenty fifth. Once you write the checks on the twenty fifth. Um, you the check would basically eliminate this. So if I go to the right check and I select, I don't think I created a subvention account. Just quickly create one. You can actually create um, accounts and items on the on the go. So let's say we write a check to an employee, and we're going to set them up as an quickly add them as an employee. So we are going to basically put this check, the net, the check that you are writing, you are not going to put it to compensation. Right, that will double up the expenditure. You are going to put it to wages payable. And you put it to the relevant category of staff. Right, so we will not be putting it against the compensation. So when you write your checks, your net checks, you're not going to post it to to compensation. Right? Because you the journal will take care of the compensation part of it for the lump sum amount. What you'll be putting it against is the journal that you created, which is the wages and salaries payable, and you put it against the relevant um category, whether 
whether it's academic or so on and you enter the amount so we, this person's salary is a hundred thousand dollars you enter the one hundred thousand dollars the class is subvention and save and close all right so let's go back to our balance sheet or our statement of financial position we're going to look at our wages and payables wages wages um, our wages payables and here our wages payables is basically reduced by a hundred thousand dollars so if i should look at the summary for wages payable it is nine hundred thousand dollars so once you have written all your checks for salary at the end of the the month and it's a check checks and balance if this account is not cleared it means that there is an error on one of your checks the account is all about checks and balance if you will see a neg if this account is in a negative or it has a positive balance as it relates to the the, the wages pay the, the net salary it means that um the amount that was the net amount that was to is to be paid is is was not paid then. so that is how you would basically deal with your um, wages payable so as you can see we are basically as we go along creating a, a, a statement of financial position right because here we can see that we know we, we, we know all the government um seven hundred and um ten thousand dollars for statutory and if you write a check to pay any of these statutories it will be reduced so let's demonstrate that so to write a check to pay your, your statutory you click on write check um collect off taxes you set them up as a vendor I don't know some persons use tax administration of Jamaica all right so collect off taxes you select the relevant taxes that you are paying in the account section so let's say if you are paying a broad amount that is not um, specific to the to the tax or you, you, you don't you're not sure how to do the breakout you'd have to put it to the the broad statutory deductions payable and of course we need to have head tax as a statutory deduction payable so let's say we are paying nht and we are paying um right let's say you are paying nht Let's say you're paying NHT and and NIS. You're writing a check for those statutories and you're paying fifty thousand dollars each. And this is part payment. Once you, oh, this will be fifty thousand dollars. Once you save and close, or oh, we need to assign class, which is subvention. Once we save and close and look back at our balance sheet. Our statutory deductions have been reduced um, to six hundred and ten thousand dollars. The reason why you are seeing a negative for NHT is because we did not create the the liability um, for NHT. 
So we are seeing where the statutory deduction payable has been reduced from seven hundred and ten thousand dollars to six hundred and ten thousand dollars. And our wages and payables reduced to nine hundred thousand dollars from a million dollars. Alright, so those are the journal entries um for the payroll. We're going to be looking at the fixed asset register and 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 this the, the fixed asset register is basically required by the ministry of education and what they call it is the master inventory listing but in quickbooks you will see a fixed asset register so to, to create a fixed asset in quickbooks you go to list and you go to fix asset item list and you right click anywhere on the white screen and you click on new then you are going to enter the asset name so you can say um filing cabinet five draw filing cabinet okay so we're going to say five jar filing cabinet And you're going to put this to the an asset account which you would create and you can call this equipment so we're going we're going to be adding it as a new account equipment and save and close and uh the same thing can be on this the the name can be the same as the purchase description and the sales description but this the item is not being sold so we, are, we don't need to select here All right it's not an item that you are going to sell at the end of the the useful life of life of the asset all right so um we're going to look at the date which is the purchase date so you enter the date that you purchased the the asset and you're going to enter the cost so let's say this cost you twenty five thousand dollars you're going to enter the vendor And this is a non-posting transaction. This will not affect your, your financials. This basically will generate a list in QuickBooks. So um, the same thing can be here for the, the asset description as well. But I need to backtrack a little. All right. We have asset name or number, the Ministry of Education, as a coding system where they use the building number so they if it's the bursar's office you would maybe have bur slash um then you have another code no you'd have the school name first so demo high school dhs bursar's office so it would be bur then you have a, a code for the category of the um the, the 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 fixed asset so if this is cabinet filing cabinet you can have fil then you have the a number a unit number for that particular um filing cabinet that you would mark on the asset it, asset itself if the if the equipment has a serial number which this would be suitable for like um computers and copiers and those equipment you would basically enter the serial number and you would enter when the warranty would expire and purchase order number used to purchase the asset and last but not least the location of the asset because this is what you are going to be using to generate your reports to, to post to a different location so once you select ok the asset would be saved we're going to quickly duplicate this so we can get a report 
I'm going to duplicate this item and I'm going to put this to two. So this is a second five drawer filing cabinet. But this is in the assistant bursar's office. So you are going to use AB for assistant bursar. And the serial number would be different. And location would be assistant bursar. And you're going to select OK. Alright, so we have two assets. So in order for you to get your inventory to post to your location, you'd basically go to reports and you go to the list and you go to fixed asset list. And this report would show all the fixed assets. You can customize what you want to appear on the report so you can customize that you want the location you can tell the system that you want the location of the fixed asset to be displayed and we're going to select ok so there you have assistant versa where location of the fixed asset is Um, so let's let's suppose we want to print a, a sheet with all the items in the assistant versus office. You would go to you would filter this report. So you would go to customize report and you click on filters, and you are going to filter it by the location. So you can search for the location filter, location of the fixed asset, and you type assistant bursa and once you select ok only items that are in the assistant bursa would, would um, bursa's office would, would display on this report and if we need to display what is in the the bursa's office you simply input bursa and there you will see oh we need to be more specific because the filter is picking up the word bursa in the in the um in the assistant bursa in the, in the name so we need to be more specific so uh, maybe we need to but you you guys would basically get the gist of it you just make the location specific. You can maybe give it a, a room number as well. And it would basically generate the report that you need. I think we are basically wrapping up now. Um, the, the, the other point I wanted to make was, was basically exporting the financial to, to Microsoft Excel once you have generated your financial statement. And so to do so, once you have made, made all your entries at the end of the month, you would go to click on Excel and this would basically create a new worksheet. Alright, so here we have your balance sheet in Excel and you can make as many modifications as you want to it in terms of formatting. You can change the font size, you can add, add notes, but some persons don't like the indentation. So if you, if you do not want the indentation in the reports, what you can do is to do a report that is more um, detailed I mean not detailed more of a summary so you can click the arrows to to get rid of the indentation and get the summary so if you want the total for 
bank and cash you use you click the arrows and it basically would expand and collapse so if you want it to be exported as a summary you need to go to each of these subs and you would click the arrow and it would basically summarize wages and, and payables I mean wages payables you click it um, it summarize equity and you, you click it and it summarize so once you have done all of this you you get a very compact report straight to the point uh, total liabilities and equities 11.2 total assets 11.2 so your balance sheet is balanced or your statement of financial um, position all right you will need to you can do the customization from here so you click on customization and you can change the name to be statement of financial position right but whenever you do those changes you may need to do the changes that we just did a while ago so it depends on what you what what you want to display so if you want to see the, the detailed bank accounts and and the statement then you would basically display them if you want to see the detail of your liabilities you can you can display them but it will not you will not be able to to get them once you export to excel so you you choose what you want the report to look like from here before you export to excel we are going to go deeper into reporting um for the um session number seven which will be just looking at reports so here we are going to click on customize report again and we want to just basically look at the stuff like the format in the, the font you can choose that you don't want any without sense sometimes the sense don't really make much sense so we can choose to display it without sense and when you select ok you notice that it is much better without the sense those are some of the things that we are going to be digging deeper into as it relates to reporting so this is our statement of financial position once it is exported to excel then you can make your notes um to your, to your statement so you can add a column for notes and you can add the relevant notes in your report so you can have a you can have a, a summary and then you can copy and paste these in a in a on another page and have a note that that would refer to to that section and we have come to the end of this session an edited version of this session will be posted that is more detailed and that is more that is clearer so be sure to even if you have attended the live session ensure that you go back and you watch the edited version because as i say it's it's sometimes not as exactly as what the live what happens in the live session